Hey folks, thanks for joining us today. I'm Dr. Dan, Dr. AJ Tarpoff is here and we're gonna talk about hardware disease in your cows. We're gonna talk about clinical signs, prevention, much more. Thank you so much for joining us. captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. AJ Tarpoff. And Dr. Tarpoff is a veterinarian and has a master's degree in, in diagnostic medicine and pathobiology. And he is here at Kansas State University. Tell people a little bit about what you do here at K-State. So here at K-State, I'm actually the beef extension veterinarian for the state of Kansas. So I work very much with our producers, our extension service, practicing veterinarians all over the state of Kansas. I'm actually housed in the animal science department here at Kansas State University. So I do get a hand in teaching some of our young undergrad students and some master's students uh, through some different phases on uh, basic health and control of diseases. Yeah, well, you do a great job. We're very fortunate to have you here at K-State. Uh, my daughter's taken your class and, and thought it was wonderful. And, and um, obviously, the service you do for our producers is, and veterinarians is second to none. Glad to catch you in town and have an opportunity to talk about some stuff. And we're going to talk about hardware disease. And I'm sure you all have heard of hardware disease uh, in cattle, but we thought today we'd go a little bit more in depth, maybe talk about what it is, how it happens, where it happens, different things like that. Absolutely. So what is hardware? Well, yeah. hardware, you think about going to the hardware store or going to your shop and everybody has that one drawer that is just full of bolts, loose pieces of wire, you name it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we get the same type of condition in cattle. Okay, cattle are nondescript eaters. They go through a pasture, they go through a feed bunk, they consume everything that's in front of them. Then they go and lay down and they regurgitate that and they rechew it. Unfortunately, whenever they're, they're grazing like that, their normal behavior, they can swallow and eat different pieces of metal that may be in the, in the environment. Now, because of the, the anatomy of cattle, those pieces of wire, those bolts, maybe a fence nail, maybe a screw, it drops down in what's the first chamber of the stomach called the reticulum or the honeycomb stomach. Yep, okay? yep. So the honeycomb stomach, it, it's, it's very important to understand where that sits. It sits low in, in the belly, mm -hmm. but very far forward right next to the diaphragm. Okay. And the diaphragm separates the chest cavity to the abdominal cavity. Okay, so, so that's right a, that's our that's our fajita. That's our skirt steak, the that's, diaphragm. That's our, our skirt steak. <laughs> so now whenever we're when we think about the reticulum, we have these pieces of metal that are in there. What okay, what happens? Well, what happens is this it, there's a traumatic puncture. So say we have a small wire, two to five inches of, of, of a piece of wire can cause an immense amount of damage. Now, if that wire punctures through the reticulum, it all depends on where it goes, on what kind of issue we're going to run into. It can poke into the abdomen. It can poke forward and actually go into the chest cavity. And unfortunately, sitting right there is the heart and the heart sac. So if it goes into that area, we can run into other issues. Also, the liver sits just on top of that reticulum. So we can end up with some abscesses or things like that that we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, so that's where it sits. That's what it is, is we, they consume some type of, of piece of metal. And if it punctures or abra uh, causes an abrasion on the inside of the reticulum, that's where we get hardware disease. Gotcha. Well, folks, as you can see, it's not something you want to have happen to your cow. And, um, you know, let's take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Tarpoff on hardware disease. We're going to get into the clinical signs and some of the things they're going to see. You're watching Doc Talk. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you after these messages. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. No matter where, no matter why, 
The Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. AJ Tarpoff. We're at Kansas State University where Dr. Tarpoff is the beef extension veterinarian for the state of Kansas and beyond, working with veterinarians, working with beef producers, talking about, teaches over in animal science, we're talking about hardware disease, and you went through a great deal. Cow swallows a piece of wire, it can go multiple directions, but there are things it could hit that are gonna give us different clinical signs. Bingo, so uh, is there a, a risk class of cattle that are more at risk than others? Uh, well, all cattle are at risk. I just want to make that clear that all cattle can get hardware, whether this is a four-weight calf or a 2,000-pound bull, all of them can get it. Uh, but a few animals are a little bit more prone to run into some of the clinical signs. Think about our late pregnant cows right before they start going into calving. We have a lot of pressure on the inside of the abdomen, and that can help actually puncture some of these, these metal particles through the reticular wall. Now, what we'll see for clinical signs depends on where that wire or where that piece of hardware punctured. Gotcha. Okay, so if it's localized, if it just damages the inside of the reticulum, it's pretty nondescript issues, okay? Maybe the cow's off feed just a hair, okay? Maybe milk production dropped just a bit. Maybe the calf had a little bit of a belly ache and he's off feed for a little bit. Not a big deal. But if that wire punctures through and say it goes into, it goes into the abdomen close by, we, that cattle have an amazing ability to wall things off. They'll wall it off and form an abscess. That abscess is still painful. That inflammatory response is painful to the animal. Now where we see some really nasty clinical signs is that that wire punctures through the diaphragm mm. into the heart sac. Now that's where we call it traumatic reticular pericarditis. Okay, pericardium is that sac that surrounds the heart. Now when that happens, very painful. We get a lot of inflammation that goes on. A lot of pain in the chest, pain in the lower abdomen. The cattle are kind of, they're hunched up, they're uncomfortable, they go off the feed. They may actually, depending on where the inflammation is, they could be intermittently bloating, what we call vagal yep. indigestion. Yep. Uh, so they can be bloating, they're not eating, all these things. Okay, well, what in the world is happening? Well, if it goes into the heart, they can actually show signs of heart failure. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get the big, uh, we'll get the big brisket. It'll accumulate a lot of fluid. They'll have trouble breathing. They won't be able to move very much. You'll see big bounding jugular pulses. The jugular uh, veins run on either side of the neck. When the heart isn't pumping like it should, it backs up. So all this fluid, we can see these bounding jugular pulses in the neck. Uh, that is a sign of heart failure, but that's heart failure is a clinical sign of something. And if it's caused by hardware, that's where we can see this. And just realize that the infection that's associated with hardware is very extreme. Uh, the inside of the gut is full of bacteria. The rest of the body is not. So we take that gut bacteria and place it directly into the heart. We can get a pretty nasty abscess, a pretty nasty inflammation, bad infection. Yeah, I've seen them, you know, those cows or steers that get that and they start to get that old bulldog look and spread out in their shoulders and their elbows and, and, and start to be like a low rider type, you know, where their shoulders are lower and their butts up and they're wide and, and they're trying to get the pressure off their chest. So if they can stand in a particular way to get that pressure off of their chest, they will do it. Yeah. And it, it, it looks a little awkward, but you can see it from a distance away. Well, folks, not something we want to have happen. We don't want a pericarditis or a peritonitis. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about treatments, prevention, more with Dr. A.J. Tarpon.
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. We're Jurgers Cattle Company, cow-calf operation primarily with a small replacement heifer operation. We started our operation in 2012, but we expanded on my father-in-law's operation who started in the 70s and built off his expertise and his knowledge and have taken and grown it to what it is today. We span about uh, four different counties in North and South Carolina, running about a thousand acres with 350 roughly head of mama cows. My husband and I and my son and my father-in-law operate uh, together. About two years ago, we decided to make the switch to become all natural producers. And what that means is it's a certain standard of quality and life for not only the calves that become part of the food source and, and the meat itself, but the cows also. Beef checkoff is important for our operation in a twofold way. First is marketing, creating a customer for us. We sell directly to feedlots, but our end game is the consumer. Uh, we want to create a product for the consumer that, that they desire, that they want to go back to the supermarket or steakhouse and they want more beef. Everybody knows the slogan, beef is what's for dinner, but it falls even more than that in that they've raised consumer awareness and quality, which is important to us because we try to focus heavily on our genetics. That's a main component of our operation and the checkoff has allowed us to do that by promoting a product that's important to the consumer, that it's good quality, it's safe, it's nutritious, and, and they're gonna, gonna want to be return customers. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with my guest, who's a friend and colleague, Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. He's a veterinarian uh, here at Kansas State, serving the state of Kansas and beyond as our beef uh, extension veterinarian. And we're talking about hardware disease. We've talked about how we, how we, what we see, why it happens, and now let's talk a little bit about treatment. Okay, <laughs> so treatment, uh, we talked about all these signs. We can have other diseases and illnesses that could look very similar to hardware. Yep. So I, what are a couple things that our veterinarians might utilize to make sure and make an accurate diagnosis? Uh, well, there's one called the withers test. Yeah. Well, we'll actually pinch the top of the withers in between the shoulder blades, we'll actually pinch uh, pinch the animal while it's in a shoot. A normal animal won't like that and they'll kind of bend down and get away from it. Uh, an animal that has hardware, if they bend down like that, it, it causes a lot of pressure on the inside of the chest where they're feeling a lot of pain. So they'll just stand up, they'll stand higher into the pinch and they'll actually grunt. So we kind of call that a grunt 
affirmation that yep. yes, it's got hardware. The other is we actually place a small board on the chest and pull, put a little bit of pressure in an upward motion. And it's just to painful. see if the animal responds, because it, it's hard to be able to distinguish what kind of pain these animals are in. Uh, so those are kind of some of our diagnostics. Uh, x-ray, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, field x-ray equipment available to be able to... Uh, well, and where, that, and where the heart is, it's you so got to sit through both shoulders, and that'd be a tough Very shot to hard. Get. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our uh, veterinary practitioners do have portable ultrasounds that are available that they could utilize to be able to help with that diagnosis. Uh, but usually we can get pretty close, a pretty accurate diagnosis from some of those tests that are available. And all that is done out in the field. Okay, yeah. so treatment. What do we do? Uh, we hope. Okay, we hope that we can get this animal free. All right, number one is we want to make sure that we're, de we're increasing the comfort of these animals because it is so painful, so we may utilize some anti-inflammatories. Uh, two, we do have a nasty infection that's going on. These cows, usually they're running a fever, depending on, on how, uh, how progressive that infection is. So maybe 103, 104, maybe a little above, but not a screaming hot temperature. Uh, so we will usually place these animals on antimicrobials. Uh, the other thing that even though it's more of a preventative, uh, magnets. Okay, yeah. We use rumen bolus magnets. Okay, They're relatively cheap. They're a little over two bucks a piece. Uh, but what we do is we don't want that piece of hardware, that piece of wire, to migrate any further than it already has. Yep. So we want to stop where it's moving, control the infection, increase the comfort, get these animals rehydrated, and hope for the best. Now, the other things that we can do is, okay, so some of these animals, they're, if they've already gone into full-blown heart failure, we're, at, we're already past the point of no return. Uh, if, it, it, if this is something that is continuing to happen, but it's just they go off feed, they go back to normal, that is an animal we, we probably could still cull. Okay, that, that would be a good choice to cull. As long as they're not running a fever, they're still in good condition, uh, they aren't, you know, they're not showing those severe clinical signs, that's a good animal to choose to be able to cull. Yep. Well, if you're ever at a vet clinic and you see some weird magnets stuck to the door frames or stuck somewhere in their vet box, that's what those are, folks, are the bolus magnets. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, they, they'll grab a hold about anything. They're they pretty powerful. They are very powerful. Powerful. Well, it's some great information, folks, and, and thanks for being here. We're going to have another segment. When we come back, we're going to talk about prevention of hardware disease, things that you can do on your farm, ranch, feedlot. More with Dr. Tarpoff after these messages. Are your cows practical or profitable? If you want them to be both, come to the Dale Banks Angus Bull Sale Saturday, November 17th near Eureka, Kansas. Selling 140 yearling and coming two-year-olds who have spent their days on the rugged pastures of the Flint Hills. For 114 years, the Perriers have been focused on providing hard-working, balanced trade bulls for progressive cattlemen nationwide. Make plans to join us November 17th or pre-register to bid online. For more information and to view our catalog, visit www.dalebanks.com. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Sand Strew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results. I said, hey, I have arthritis. I have joints really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints, my hip, and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with, saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. But I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk here. Thanks for joining me for our Cattle First tip today, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. And we're talking about injection sites. And injection sites, all of our injections go in the neck. 
Here's a picture of the injection site triangle that you can see is underneath the nuchal ligament, above the vertebral column, and in front of the point of the shoulder. This injection site triangle is where we will put all of our injections for cattle. Now, if we're gonna do two injections in that area, we put about a hand's width apart between the two injections. Nothing goes in the top butt, nothing in the round, nothing over the ribs. Now, if you're gonna do a sub-Q injection, you go in at a 45 degree angle with a 5 8 inch or half inch needle. If you're gonna do an intramuscular injection, you go in perpendicular to the calf with an inch to inch and a half length needle. This is your Cattle First Tip. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, and we're at Kansas State University where Dr. Tarpoff is our beef extension veterinarian for the state of Kansas. And we talked hardware disease, um, and we need to get to prevention. Prevention is absolutely key. Okay, yeah. so we talked about the risk. Who's at risk? Well, there was actually some research that was done that showed 55 to 75% of animals that went to the slaughter in the eastern half of the United States had hardware in the reticulum. <laughs> so the risk is there. What do we do? Well, I talked about magnets as a treatment. If you're gonna have, be having grazing animals, placing a magnet is a long stem kind of insurance policy that you can put in. We talk about an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of treatment. Yeah. Well, in this case, a $2 magnet is worth, you know, a thousand to $1,500 worth of an <laughs> yeah. animal. Uh, so placing a magnet, and they, they do last a long period of time, they're very powerful, they don't lose their uh, efficacy, but they will kind of get completely encirculated with debris if they consume it. Uh, so the first part of prevention, use a magnet. Yeah. Magnet is a great And we use magnets medicine. on feed trucks, mm -hmm. we use magnets in feed mills, all different places. Now, talking about the, the magnets on some of our feeding equipment, uh, it, number one, are they there? Okay, are they on the conveyor belts? Are they on the delivery out of the, coming out of the feed truck? Are they on the loaders themselves for silage? Uh, there, there are numerous different companies place these magnets in specific areas. Uh, the biggest thing with those is check them. Check them, check them, check them. They will get full up. Uh, so we do need to make sure they stay clean. Sometimes it's pretty entertaining on what you find on those magnets. If you lost that 7 16 for an inch uh, a while back and <laughs> you've really been looking for it, check your magnets inside the mill or inside the feed truck. Sometimes they are attached to that. Uh, so we keep them clean. We keep them, uh, you know, well lubricated. So everything, get, if something comes onto there, it does get attached. We remove that. It never enters the feed bunk, never enters the feed. Uh, the other thing to think about, we've actually had a reduction in hardware over the years. And why would that be? Well, we're using baling twine and baling wrap rather than uh, baling wire. Oh, yeah. So now I, I say that, that less of that will actually be put into the bunk or put into the round bale feeder or anything like that. But baling wire is the rancher's best friend, okay? It, we use it for so many things on the ranch, whether it's wiring up a gate. But how often do we leave long strings hanging around? Whether we clip them off or they fall onto the ground uh, or we leave, leave them attached to the side of the, the T-post. Well, if we do that, cattle are very curious. They will go up. Not only will they itch on that piece of wire, but they'll start to chew on it. And when they chew on it, it they, they're, the way their teeth grind, they will perfectly pop that off and swallow it. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's the perfect size to cause some pretty severe issues on the inside of the reticulum. So keep in mind, use your magnets. Make sure we remove all wire that's out there. Keep a close eye on if you're doing some any type of work around cattle and you have a box of nails or a box of staples, make sure you keep those close. Cattle are very curious and they'll go and start to investigate what's on it. On You've lost a wrench, box. haven't you? I have. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, Dr. Tarpoff, outstanding individual um, and a wealth of knowledge. We're lucky to have him at K-State. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. And if you want to know more about what we do at, at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Go to the extension website, and see what Dr. Tarpoff does. Always work with your local veterinarian. Thanks for watching us today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. 
Learn more at eggpromosource.com.